Hello everyone, welcome to another video on Intro 2 Spinners. Today we're, we're, we're going to talk about how the Dirac Spinner transforms under rotations and finally finally capture the idea of how spinners transform in a bit of a weird way. So let's start. So here I have uh, the transformation, uh, sorry, the rotation matrix for some four vector about the x-axis. So I have a four, these four vector components, and, and you would multiply this, the four vector components by the rotation matrix to rotate it about the x-axis by some amount theta. Now I haven't actually written, written theta explicitly um, along the, the trigonometric the trigonometric functions because it, it's, it's, it's going to take up too, too much space but basically there's an implied theta next to each one of these so for spinners however it's a bit different so if if, if we can recall from our last video um basically we can take the direct by spinner and write it um in terms of two components now these aren't really two components since chi um, it's just the while spinner, the left cardinal one. And then epsilon is the right cardinal spinner. So technically, it's uh, four components, but kind of hidden in two. So this is how the um, left cardinal sp uh, spinner rotates. As you can see, there's, there's actually a theta over two term here, and this is this is actually what causes a spinner sort to rotate weirdly. Since for every rotation, for the four vector, it's divided by two here, and and as as you can see also, uh, it's two by two compared to this four by four matrix here. Since these have two components to make the math work out. So, so yeah, this is how, how you rotate the left curl spinner, and and the, the rotation matrix is exactly the same exact thing for the right curl spinner. So to rotate the by spinner, the direct by spinner, it's really simple. All we just do is really stack this rotation matrix like onto itself. Uh, since all we do is, is we rotate the left curl spinner and you rotate the, the right curl spinner, which corresponds to stacking this matrix on top of itself. You guys are, you guys are gonna see what I really mean by that. So uh, let's actually rotate some things here. Let's spin some things. So what? So let's uh, rotate the um, four. Oh, let's find out what the what the rota rotation, rotation matrix is, is gonna be um, for a 360 degree rotation around the x axis. So let's do that. So you have one zero 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 one zero 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 zero. Now it's cosine of two pi. Like remember that two pi. Right, two pi corresponds. Oops, two pi corresponds to three sixty degree rotation, right? So uh, we cosine of two pi. Well, cosine of pi. Sorry, cosine of zero is one. Cosine of pi is minus one. So cosine of two, of two pi is going to be a one, right? Uh, yes. And then we have minus sine. Well, sine of uh, two pi is going to be zero. Zero, zero, zero. The cosine of two pi again. It's gonna be one. So you have all ones along this diagonal here. This is this is the rotation matrix um, for uh, the four vector about the x-axis. So what, what about um, the left cardinal spinner? Let's do the same thing here. Um, we have uh, two pi. Right? So we have cosine of two pi, but I have two pi over two, which is pi. Cosine of pi is gonna be minus one. Sine of okay two pi over two. That's sine of pi, right? That's going to be zero. Uh, same thing here is zero, and then same thing here minus one. So this is actually the rotation matrix. Um, oops, how do I, how do I actually do this? Um, probably should. Yeah, yeah, I know you guys can't see that here. Let me just be a bit unorthodox here and kind of like move this camera over. Oops. Uh, here is the rotation matrix um, for a right chiral spinner and a left chiral spinner about the x-axis, okay? And notice how it differs from this one, because here we have ones all along the diagonal, but here we have minus ones instead. So this, so if you rotate um, some four vector by 360 degrees, it's this. Rotate spinner by 360 degrees. Oops, sorry. Rotate spinner by 360 degrees. You get minus one zero zero minus one, like the opposite of the identity matrix. And this is actually 
why it's actually why a 360 degree of rotation for some four vector it, it brings it back to the original of four vector right because it just there's all ones here it's just it's just the identity matrix right if i i zero zero here right however the however um 360 degree rotations um for the spinner will um make me will we'll make this t uh, take on a negative uh part right since this is just the negative identity matrix and now this is for the left curl spinner and the right curl spinner so basically the general rotation ma matrix for like the entire um uh four well, for the entire bias spinner, we just stack these on top of each other. I believe this this should be like zero 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 minus one. I'm not quite, yeah, I think it should be like that. Maybe yeah. And this is going to be the the rotation matrix for the um drag bias spinner since it's, it's the same matrix, right? We just stack it on top of each other. And this is going to, well, once this acts on our component, it's going, to, it's going to make those components take on a minus sign. Since there are minuses all along the, the diagonal here, but plus ones all along, all along the diagonal here. And if you want to rotate it um, by, seven, by 720 degrees, we'll find out that um, you just plug in, wait, let me just put this here. You just plug in 720 um, here, and 720 over two would be 360, and then you'd finally properly rotate our spinner. Um, so yeah, that's how we rotate the Dirac spin, the Dirac bias spinner, and yeah, that, that's, that uh, finishes our video. I hope you guys have a great day, and if you like this video, uh, please consider sharing it, and yeah, have an amazing day. Bye!